the one thing I remember about Junior Johnson and you driving that 22 is the fireball at oh, Bristol. Yeah. So uh, they're racing at Bristol. It's a damn badass race. But now, maybe not for him and all the guys on the racetrack. This is when it was asphalt. Every damn body's getting their shit tore up left and right. Every damn car on the track. But that is stupid. Huh? Pit road thing, remember? That pit road thing, you, you was odd even. Yeah. You worked like hell if you last pass by and get back in front of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just on pit road. It pit was road. a damn wild ass race. I remember sitting on top of a comfort coach van in the corner watching you. And uh, you backed it in the wall. Yeah. They come down pit road. And they need to get – in the back of the car is mashed down to the ground. They need to get the damn spoiler yeah, back up yeah. at a reasonable height so he can go, he goes out there and drives it. He's like, I can't drive some with a spoiler on the ground. So they put jack stands on top of the fuel cell rack, and the jack stands hold the deck lid. So have just for tail end. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes back out on the track, and he's making laps. Run, run third, go back to third. Did you? With the damn jack stands <laughs> yeah. riding in the back. Yeah. Got turned around, or what happened? How'd you get spun out? Well, a piece of metal off the sauce broke off. Cut the left rear tire down. So you backed it into the wall again. Those fuel, those uh, jack stands go through the fuel cell, Mike. Yeah. And yeah, this as thing, it would when it's sitting on top of the fuel cell. In the pictures of this, uh, in the pictures of this crash, you can see one of the Bounce. fuel cell or one of the jack stands flying through there, bouncing down the racetrack in the ball of fire. I mean, this thing was a ball of fire. Oh yeah, it was hot. So that, back then you had uh, fuel cells in, back then. That's fuel cell, but you had uh, oil. Oil, too. Oil tank. Oil right. tank. And that ruptured as well? It ruptured well. It busted all that shit. Yeah. Said, the oil got the gas, gas, got the oil fire started. Damn. Boy, that's uh, combustible. Yeah, you had a lot going on. Um, <laughs> chocolate Myers runs over there, helps you, helps you, know, you get out. Yeah. Pull the glove, meat come off of the What? Glove. Meat. Really? You got burnt up pretty bad. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, just your hand or uh, uh, legs? Ew. Damn. Because the car backs into the wall, then comes down the track backwards. backwards. So the fire is, he's just backing into the fire. Back one in the damn crust panel. Is wow. Fun, fun, fun fire on me. Burning so damn bad. It was, it was hot. So I've been inside a car that's been on fire, and I can't express to people how fucking hot fire is. <laughs> It is like a million bees stinging you yeah, yeah. all at once. It's in fire. It's yeah. It is a worst experience. Um, and those burns, they the take forever, yeah. forever to heal. I was sitting in the car at Bristol. The, the weekend that we swept Bristol. I remember that. I was thinking about this as you were talking. So I had a, uh, I had a big old scab on top of my thigh, and it was a big f- sore, but it had, it had uh, grown almost shut. Right, it healed itself yeah. almost shut, but it was still about I don't know four by four big scab on top of my thigh. And uh, I'm in the car practicing, and one of my crew guys comes over to help me tighten my seatbelt, and he uh, his hand slipped and he punched me in the thigh right there, and it busted that like Ooh. it just busted it, and it's just like you got to start all over mm. that whole scab. I has to regrow right. Um, and those things would take forever to heal. So I can't imagine what you dealt with. So you burnt a lot of your, uh, a lot of the skin on your hand. How did you race? Just, just wanted to race. Yeah. You just, I'll ha- run next week and build. wrapped it up. Wilkesboro. Wrap it up Jeez. and go. And, uh, just run one lap, just keep points. Oh, and, I got you. And then, uh, come back and run Martinsville next week. Run good. And then, my to leg and run fourth. Yeah. Oh, Dale Earnhardt spins going down in turn one. Earnhardt's in the fence. And creating a traffic jam behind. Sterling oh, Marlin. he's very hit hard by Sterling Marlin, who slides into him and hits him hard on the right front corner of the car as the field comes around for the caution once again. Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt spin down in turn number one, and Earnhardt is sitting at the bottom of the racetrack, the car not operating. There's quite a bit of damage done to the Goodrin Chevrolet. Sterling Marlin, you can see there's damage done to his car as well. He comes on around, but there is a lot of damage done to the right rear of his car. The ambulance going to the scene, but it will not be needed as Earnhardt has the car rolling. He's backing around trying to find some place to land so he can start. Well, he's going to back in this road. Oh, he's going yeah, back to his pits. his pits. Yeah. Look out. That's an unusual uh, entrance to the pits. But, and uh, here comes members of the crew up to greet him. He's backing down this road in the pit area. 
close to where he is pitted here on the main stretch. There's Cecil Gordon. Got a jack stand out. The other crew's talking on the radio, telling what they need. And here's Jerry Punch, who's right there. Dale's getting some of the harnesses rebuckled here. Dale, he's trying to get uh, talking to the crew here on the radio. They're trying to get him refixed. He is on the radio trying to get the car refired. You see him sitting sitting in the car, and the crew now surveying the damage. Kurt Shelburne and the crew trying to talk to Dale Earnhardt as they get ready to change tires. A tough break for a driver who has had so many good runs here. And now he puts the net down. We'll go back in and get a word with him. Dale, up, uh, tough break. What happened up there? Fast car didn't throw the caution spread all on the racetrack. I, hit, I busted my butt. You took a pretty good lick. Are you uh, you okay? You took a pretty good lick from behind. Huh? You took a pretty good lick from behind. You all right? Yeah. Just, they, you know, they seen that car spin. Didn't throw the caution. They had oil on the racetrack going in one. They didn't do nothing. They don't care. Obviously upset. Dale Earnhardt sitting in the car. And the crew now have their work cut out for him. Lots of sheet metal damage on this Goodwin Chevrolet. The shoulders crew now will begin to try to pick, put the parts back together and get him out to pick up some points. The defending Winston Cup champion sitting at the end of pit road with a damaged race car. Let's go to John Kernan, who's there in the Sterling Marlin pit. Sterling is back in for the second time. They will work around the rear end. As you can see, it looks like he got run smack into the rear end and pushed it down just a little bit. Now, that probably will cause some handling problems out on the track. They've got a pry bar in there. They're trying to pry it back out. They're working fast. Sterling will leave to remain on the lead lap. He's got a lot of damage on that rear end, though. We'll replay the incident and show you the tail end of the Earnhardt spin up in turn number one and how he got punched by Sterling Marlin. We see Earnhardt spin, and he's backed in the wall, but I don't think there's a lot of damage to the rear of the car. And we see Sterling and Marlin come in and just simply back in the front of the car. Now there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's where the damage is, is as far as that car running. Again, now you right can now. see that Dale just uh, apparently did hit that oil and slid right up to the wall and then down the banking. And Sterling Marlin comes along and boom, right in the right front of the car. And now from Dale Jarrett's bumper cam. Running right behind Harry Gant going into the turn. Ooh, got <laughs> awfully close hey. there. Didn't oh, it works. <laughs> I thought maybe we lost it, but it took a hit and continued to work. So the third caution flag is out on Bristol International Raceway in this 500 lap race. 42 have gone by. Rusty Wallace, the leader, back with more right after this. They continue to work on Dale Earnhardt's car, trying to get it back into the race. He was involved in a spin down in turn number one, and then was hit by Sterling Marlin. Now, before that incident, here is a spin coming off of corner number four that involved Terry Labonte. You see, Labonte did a 360. He stood on the gas and spun the rear tires and created a tremendous amount of smoke. I believe that's the smoke that Dale saw. Now, there, all those cars come in, they run into the smoke, and Dale goes down the corner, and I, he thinks that there's some oil in there. I'm sure there's oil on the racetrack, but it was, I don't think, from Labonte's car. Could have been some from the former caution flag when Bobby Hamilton blew an engine. Exactly. The 68 car evidently lost an engine, so that may be the all oil that uh, Earnhardt got into. Nine cars on the lead lap. Last car on the lead lap now is Sterling Marlin, who had a bad... Oh, a bad, bad fire. Crash. Sterling Marlin involved in a very hard crash up in turn number one. The car becomes engulfed in flame. He apparently back into the wall and maybe the fuel cell. He's getting out of there. Adam Boyster, come on, babe. Get out of that thing. There you go. He is out, falling to the pavement. He's trying to crawl away from the race car. And at least he's out. Thank God for fuel, for rubber gas tanks and, and the foam that's inside them that doesn't allow all that fuel to come out because that could have been a major, major deal. So you can see some of the Dale Earnhardt crew guys running out to assist Sterling Marlin as he walks away from the crash. We have a report that he blew a left rear tire as he went into that turn. And we were just saying that he was the last car on the lead lap. He was right up there in front on the inside when the green came out and had been dropping back 
quickly. And now the car goes hard in the first turn wall. But as you can see, he is sitting up and the safety workers are removing his helmet. Sterling appears to be okay. We'll be right back. There is what's left of the Maxwell House Ford, driven by Sterling Marlin. The car made contact with the wall in turn one and then erupted in a huge ball of flame. Here it is. We see him backing in the wall with a left front. And the thing, as you said, just erupts in a huge ball of flame. And I don't, that's not too much of a problem until the car starts drifting down and all the flames go back through the cockpit of the car. Yeah, it had to get hot in there for him, but thank God Sterling got out of the car. And is now being taken to the infield care center. Here it is from another angle. You can see how much flame there was as the car slid down the banking. Let's go now to John Kernan, who's with Mike Beam. Mike, a very scary moment, but Sterling looks like he's okay. Yeah, he's gonna, he said it's gonna be okay. He burned his face a little bit, you know, but he'll be okay, you know. The guy's done a good job today, you know, got in that wreck early. And, the car was off. You bet the house a little bit, trying hard, but you know he done a hell of a job, and you know it's just a shame because you know we thought we had a plan, but he ran over something going in one. He just turned around on him, you know. So I just wasn't knowing we could do. Well, thankfully it looks like that he is okay. His face was just a little bit red. I saw when he walked away to the ambulance, but I think that's a tribute to the safety factors that go into these uh, cars, gentlemen, what with the fire suits and everything like that. All right. Indeed, there isn't much left of the car, but. Nobody really cares about the condition of the car. Our concern is the condition of Sterling Marlin, and he appears to be not seriously injured. John, truly an amazing story that this man would even be at this racetrack this weekend. It was one week ago, Sunday afternoon, Bristol, Tennessee, lap 421. A piece of metal came out of the left exhaust pipe, cut the left rear tire, and the Maxwell House Ford began to spin, slam the outside wall in turn one, and burst into flames. The car backed down across the racetrack, and Sterling Marlin bailed out of the race car with first and second degree burns. Three days in intensive care, then transferred on Thursday this week to the Vanderbilt University Burn Center, where he's getting excellent care, and it's from there that he was flown to, Brist to Wilkesboro today to get in this race car. And Sterling, for all the fans across the country and us at ESPN, it's good to see you back, my friend, and uh, how are you feeling? I feel good, Jerry. Uh, it's good to be back, and, uh, you know, set up at Bristol Monday. I just wonder if I can get back in the car this weekend, and uh, the burns are healing real good, and uh, I'll probably get released next Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, maybe I can run Martinsville. We'll just have to see how good they're healing, and uh, things look good, so uh, we'll just hang on and see what we'll do. I'd like to thank everybody that sent cards and called, and uh, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, you know, the race fans are great, and I am just appreciate being here. A tremendous display of courage by this 33-year-old driver to run one lap today, climb out of the car, and he will leave immediately by ambulance back to Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee, and hopefully to race many, many more Sunday afternoons. Bob? Almost, almost let Kawiki get the jump. Here's Sterling Marlin in. Jerry Punch? And as planned, they will take Sterling Marlin out of the car very gently and very gingerly. They have a golf cart standing by to take him back to the garage area. He will get in an ambulance. Actually, a man that now lifted him out. 52-year-old Carmen, Carmen Lotsback. Another for Indiana will climb in the car. Lotsback, remember, drove for Junior Johnson many years ago. Has not run on the radial tires here at Wilkesboro. Has practiced early in the week. They are trying to get him in. They have lost a lap here in the pits. They are hooking up his helmet right now. Sterling Marlin does not want to walk away. Now the car has gone two laps down as the leaders now move by. The Maxwell House Ford still in the pits, and Sterling Marlin standing, making sure everything has worked. They will get the car refired. Glotzbach will pull away. Mike Bean jumps on the right side. The car now goes three laps down. Yellow flag is out. Another caution. There is an umbrella, believe it or not, on the racetrack. Now, where in the world did that fall out of the grandstand? <laughs> I guess it did. I'm sure it didn't fall out of one of those race cars. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, that's a first. <laughs> the sixth caution flag of the afternoon at Bristol is brought out by an umbrella on the racetrack.